Last time, we talked about possible antenna designs for our tumor destroying system. And we started to consider both a monopole antenna and a hybrid helix. The hybrid helix was found to have more favorable properties, so let's consider that one further. Remember that the hybrid helix is actually a dipole antenna with one arm being the monopole, right here, and the other arm being the helix. If we want to use the hybrid helix in the solution to our design challenge, one thing we would have to decide is how long to make the two arms of the antenna. On one hand, we might want the arms of the dipole to be as short as possible so that the antenna is small. And then we can easily maneuver it around to get it to the location of the tumor. However, is it possible for us to make the antenna too small? Would there be any drawbacks to making the arms of the dipole as short as possible? Would the antenna still radiate well? To answer this, let's see if we can study the power flow away from the short dipole antenna. Then we can see what happens if we lengthen the arms of the dipole. For the moment, let's ignore the more complex hybrid helix antenna. Instead, for simplicity, let's consider a simpler dipole antenna like the one we studied last time with a triangular current distribution across the length of the antenna. Let's say that our antenna is in free space. It's made of copper with a sigma of 5.8 times 10 to the seventh Siemens per meter. And the radius, let's say A, is one millimeter. Now we also need to choose an operating frequency for our antenna. What should we choose? Well, microwave ovens operate at about 2.4 gigahertz. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that 2.4 gigahertz is right around here in the microwave range. We can see that 2.4 gigahertz is not above the ultraviolet uh, part of the spectrum. And that's good because those electromagnetic waves are ionizing, meaning that, that they can kick electrons out of orbit and they can potentially cause cancer in people. So these can be cancerous, just like x-rays if, if people are exposed too much to x-rays. On the other hand, we also don't want to choose a frequency that is too low because then the wavelengths get very large and we'll see that the antenna will correspondingly need to be very large. So 2.4 gigahertz is probably a good place to start. However, uh, note in general, we would also need to get our frequency of operation approved by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC. Now luckily, 2.4 gigahertz happens to be in an unlicensed industrial, scientific, and medical band. So that's another reason 2.4 gigahertz is an easy frequency to start with for testing out our idea. Take out your in-class project notebook and describe what operating frequency we could use as a starting point for our tumor heating system and why.